is Leah Bloom and I am the city's housing project manager. I want to do a quick walkthrough of our draft 10 year housing plan so that you can participate in our 30 day public comment period. Now, before I go into detail, I just want to say we would typically be doing this in person, but because of the pandemic happening, we are going to play it safe and provide virtual walkthroughs of the document itself and how you can participate. If you have any questions, contact me. My information is shared here on this screen. My name again is Leah Bloom and you can see my information below. Um, there is a link to the City of Flagstaff's housing plan page and also a link to our town hall, which is our community survey where we're asking you to participate by providing public comment and prioritizing our policy initiatives and strategies that address Flagstaff's housing emergency. So as Council declared an emergency in about a year ago, um, they made it clear that they would like to have, I'm sorry there, they would like to have a single comprehensive community facing document to summarize the city's immediate and long term needs and strategies to improving housing affordability. And that's exactly what the draft 10 year plan does. If you're curious to how you can get to the draft 10 year plan, if you go to the city's main page, you will see a link that says residents and under that you go to affordable housing that will take you to our housing section website and you can scroll down to the left and see housing plan. Now there's three links here. Here's the 10 year housing plan. You can read the background and how it um, came to its uh, state today. Um, it also guides you to the policy initiatives and strategy survey and has my contact information here. Um, public comment period will end November 5th and we will be collecting that information and going um, back in front of our housing commission at the end of November for consideration of approval of the final 10 year housing plan and then back in front of city council for approval uh, consideration of uh, adoption of the, the final 10 year housing plan. The public participation links are here. You can again download the document or go to the survey. And then here are important links where again, you have the document to download, the survey to go to, the 10-year housing plan. This is our survey results, methodologies, and appendices showing you how we came up with the data and the findings that um, we um, display throughout the document. And then of course, our public participation plan and our project timeline, which we've followed through for the last year, getting us to where we are today. From there, let's dive into the plan itself. The draft 10 year housing plans cover is home for all Flagstaff residents. And really this covers to depict the collective benefit of affordable housing in our community um, and how it impacts our environment and access to healthy foods and um, innovative ideas and fair housing and health and transportation and education. Um, the policy initiatives and strategies have four categories and um, these are our solution categories. It's create, connect, preserve and protect. The table of contents walks you through the document, which I'm going to do uh, again. It talks about that housing as a collective benefit. We hit some really important definitions here, so reading that section is good because those definitions are carried throughout the document. Forging ahead in housing advancement. This is the accountability section and the actions needed if adopted by council. And then we go into our local housing needs um, and our data assessment. Um, we talk about our area median income level, another really important definition. Um, increasing how it's becoming increasingly unaffordable in Flagstaff, what cost burden is, and important housing topics. We get into our quantitative results and really because this plan is for all residents at all income levels, we look at both affordable and subsidized housing gap analysis and that market rate side. We'll dive a little bit into that today. 
And then we go over our qualitative results, which is our housing survey. And this was a survey that was um, distributed for the purpose of this plan. We received over 3000 respondents and um, really got to understand the true barriers to not just home ownership, but why our community members are having a hard time advancing through the housing continuum. Housing um, in Flagstaff as an housing is Flagstaff's infrastructure is close to our last section and we really talk about the interconnected challenges yet shared solutions um, between housing and healthcare and housing and neighborhood and equity, housing sustainability, zoning and land use and economic opportunity. And then we conclude with our detailed list of affordable housing policy initiatives and strategies. Again, these are the solutions to addressing the housing emergency. We want to hear from you on whether you understand the solutions, whether you're in support of the solutions, not in support of the solutions, or would like to see new solutions at the table. So uh, housing is a collective benefit. Three definitions here that are critical. What is affordable housing? That is when 30% of your gross income goes towards your housing costs. Anything more is considered housing cost burden. We then dive into what is a, a subsidy in, in Flagstaff and how this draft 10 year plan addresses subsidy. And it's defined as any form of financial assistance aimed towards decreasing housing costs that can come in many forms that can come in a down payment assistance through a parent or a down payment assistance through a, a local um, nonprofit to get into home ownership. It can come into uh, forms such as eviction prevention so that we can um, make sure that a household is housing secure and, and, and not going to enter into a situation where they're experiencing homelessness. We talk about the housing emergency and how we got here. And um, we discuss the vision of, of this document. And again, how we have four categories of create, connect, preserve, and protect, but with one overarching goal that will be accomplished through those categories. And that is to reduce the current affordable housing need in our community by half in the next 10 years. Now, this document was written for all income levels. So you will see here that um, connect it to create and preserve 7,976 units by 2031 with a minimum of 10% affordable to increase the overall supply of market rate workforce and affordable housing occupied by local residents is one element to that goal of reducing um, our current affordable housing need by half. The other, the second element of the goal is to um, impact at least 6,000 low to moderate income residents through a combination of unit creation and subsidy provision. We go into how we are going to accomplish that through our policy initiatives and our strategies. The action needed again comes down to uh, accountability and um, how leadership, um, city council and housing commission will be involved if adopted by um, Council in December. We go into our local needs assessment and we talk about the area median income, which again is a really important definition for our community to know about. And, and this is that income. It's a key factor in understanding funding availability for affordable housing programs, and it, it determines eligibility for many housing subsidies. So um, you can see here that uh, extremely low is zero to 30. It goes all the way up to 120 and higher. Uh, this plan really focuses at uh, the zero to 120 level. Now, nearly half of our residents are low income, earning no more than uh, $55,350 annually. 65% um, of all households in Flagstaff are low to moderate income. And, and that really makes it clear that folks need assistance in removing themselves from housing cost burden situations and getting into an affordable housing situation, whether it's rent or ownership, so that they can advance through that housing continuum. Um, we discussed the current market conditions and what they've looked like over um, the last 10 years. We talk about what housing cost burden is, and again, paying more than 30% of your income, and that 22,000 of our residents are currently living in that situation. This plan was written with an equitable lens, and it discusses that um, equity isn't about sameness. It focuses on making sure that everybody that it focuses on making sure that everybody gets what they need in order to be housing secure. 
and that policies that aim to achieve equity may result in unequal distribution of resources, but that they lead to a more equitable outcome for everyone. And this is when the housing continuum comes into play. So the housing continuum is, um, this is our Flagstaff housing continuum, and it talks about uh, the different forms of housing at different levels, and um, when subsidies are more important, or when our market rate housing comes into play. We talk about what Flagstaff families can afford. And then we dive into our quantitative results. And um, through this, it is important to read this section because it talks about the gap analysis and how Flagstaff found that there is currently an undersupply of 7,976 housing units. This is market rate housing units um, in need because of uh, population growth and decrease in, in housing production during the Great Recession, and that there's an additional 12,072 households with an affordable housing need. And the way that this is um, conducted through our gap analysis working groups is we essentially took into consideration two factors, our affordable housing slash subsidy gap analysis and our market rate. And you can see here that our low to moderate income families have about 10,000, 11,000 households in need of some form of affordable housing subsidy or unit. And even when we get into the 80 to 100%, 120% area median income, our larger families are in need because as we know, larger houses cost more money. Now this isn't saying that we have 12,072 households living without a roof over their head. Those roofs that are over their head are less than ideal situations such as doubling up, paying too much, um, unable to advance through that housing continuum. And then we look at our market rate. We, we take into consideration our rapid population growth, um, our decrease in housing production. We also look at uh, housing being converted to short-term rentals in our community. Um, other factors that we discuss in this section are second homes. We talk about NAU students and um, how they impact our market. And we also talk about available land that is owned by the city and designated for affordable housing. Then we dive into our qualitative results, which is our survey results. And over 3,000 residents um, did participate in this survey. I encourage you to look at that so that you can understand what their barriers are. And if you did participate in it, thank you. Um, what their barriers are to um, home ownership or um, advancing through the housing continuum. We end the document by talking about how housing is Flagstaff's infrastructure and its interconnected um, challenges, yet shared solutions with the topics discussed of healthcare, neighborhood and equity, sustainability, zoning and land use, economic opportunity. Each page has uh, an area in um, housing and healthcare, housing, neighborhood and equity. We go into sustainability, zoning and land use, and then economic opportunity and that we conclude our document by talking about how we are going to address Flagstaff's housing emergency and that is through our policy initiatives and strategies on page 43 of the document you will see a detailed list of the create category and the policy initiatives there's five policy initiatives in create a lot of these strategies are conceptual because they would not be, there's not enough time in nine months to accomplish many of these. So staff worked with our informal working groups to establish these strategies and essentially come up with a scope for each strategy, the time commitment, the public engagement levels, whether it requires council's consideration, whether funding is required and at what level, and then the duration, at what length will this take or will it be ongoing? And then lastly, staff worked internally to see which divisions wanted to be at the table so that together we can address the housing emergency. We are encouraging all community members to look at these solutions and see if you think we're missing any of them, any other solution, or if there's one that you don't agree with. Please dive through this document. If you have any questions, email Leah Bloom at flagstaffaz.gov. You can also go to the city's webpage here, which will take you directly to the housing plan, 
or you can go to Flagstaff's community forum where you can provide your public comments. Now again, our public comment period does end on November 5th. We will be bringing this back to our Housing Commission at the end of November and then in front of Council for consideration of adoption on December 7th. Thank you so much for your time. Look forward to hearing from you.